Yo, what is up everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to go over how to create this really cool sliding photo effect in Final Cut Pro 10. So you can see right here, this is what the effect looks like. Now I got this idea from uh, Star Wars Theories video. So you can see right here, it just kind of creates this really cool kind of infinite um, loop effect. It like, looks like the photos just keep on sliding and they fade out to reveal the next one. I think this is a really cool um, and interesting effect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project right here. So I'm gonna create a new project and we'll just call this um, example right here. Now keep in mind, I'm actually going to leave the frame rate at 60 frames per second. Now 59.94 probably also works, but I'm just going to stick at 60 frames per second. You want to use 60 frames per second for like commentary videos, whether you're doing like a movie review or you're talking about like a sports team or you're, you're giving highlights or your thoughts of a certain you know game. Using 60 frames per second for commentary videos I think is highly recommended. I never really noticed it until now when I kind of looked at you know the settings of, of the resolution, the frame rate when I watch a commentary video. They actually do use 60 frames per second. I actually didn't really quite know this and I'll show you why you want to use 60 frames per second uh, which do, to me doesn't really quite make that much sense. But if I click on a photo right here as you can see this photo actually says 60 frames per second. I've never actually noticed that um, photos actually have a frame rate tagged onto them. I actually did not know this. So if you're scaling a photo, it doesn't you don't really see a difference. But what I realized when you actually when you actually adjust the position of a photo and it's not a 60 frames per second project, it actually will look a little laggy. I thought it was just kind of like my eyes or you know they're playing tricks on me. But no, it really does make a difference. If you're moving the position of a photo in a non 60 frames per second timeline, it actually is going to look a little stuttery. And I honestly didn't really know that. Um, um, at first. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to go over here to a custom generator. Now this is my personal preference. I like using um, a custom generator um, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the custom generator, go over here, and I'm going to change the color to like, like a purplish color right here. Now I like using a custom generator, um, you know, colored custom generator, because I find it sometimes to be difficult to actually see the background if the background is just black, because it kind of blends in with these you know, dark gray edges. So by using a colored background, all that does is it just avoids, you know, showing the background by accident. So I'm going to go over here, click on the photos right here, I'm just going to import the photos um, right here. So this can you know, obviously be any photo you want. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set each one of the durations to control D620 right here. So each of these lasts for six seconds and 20 frames. Now remember, the difference between editing in different frame rates, 24 frames per second, it 24 frames equals a second. However, in 60 frames per second, you have to go, as so you can see right here, if I play right here, you have to go 60 frames right here, as you can see, and then we get to one second. So you have to remember that, just you know, keep in mind, if you're used to editing in a 24p timeline, you have to remember that 60 frames equals a second versus in 24 frames per second, you know, 24 frames equals a second. So that's just something um, to keep in mind. So as you can see right here, each one of these photos lasts for 6 seconds and 20 frames right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically adjust the position. So I'm going to head over here to scale. I'm going to scale it up to 140%. I'm going to go ahead and take the position right here. And I'm going to drag it all the way to the right right there. As you can see, there we go. So you want to put it in the, in the opposite direction you intend to keyframe it. So let's go over here to Lamar Jackson. Um, let's go over here. Fill it to frame right here. And now I'm going to change the scale to 140%. Take the, you know, the Y axis right here and I'm just going to drag it um, right over here. So you can see right here that's what it looks like over here. Now I'm going to go to this photo right here. I'm going to increase the scale to 140%. Take the Y axis right here and I'm just going to drag it over to the um, 
the right right there as you can see right here that's what the photos um look like right there now what i'm going to do is I'm gonna basically just keyframe the photos so what i'm going to do right here i'm going to go ahead click on the photo right here and then go to position i'm just going to keyframe the position of the photo now i'm going to go to the end of the first photo and then i'm going to go back one frame and now actually before i do that I can I just noticed this as you can see right here it's the background is showing a little bit so let's move it over here and then what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to now start keyframing it so I'm going to keyframe it right here now I'm going to go to the end of the photo right here I'm going to go back one frame I'm just going to take the position and drag the position um, over here so you can see right here now it's keyframed now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to trim the last frame so i'm going to wait for final cut to render and i'm actually just going to trim the last frame um right there so you can see right here let's go ahead and play it right here and as you can see there we go now the photo just slides to the left um right there now let's go to the second photo right here so go to the beginning of the second photo place a keyframe go go to the end of the photo right here go back one frame so I'm just going to go back one frame and then I'm going to take the position I'm going to drag Lamar Jackson all the way over to the left right there and then I'm just going to trim the last frame that way there's no you know halt in the animation the animation just keeps moving to the left um, and it doesn't stop at all so let's go ahead and go like this and let's just play the photo right here so you can see right here now you can see that photo is also um, key from the left now let's go right here click on this photo go to position right here go to the end go back one right here take the x-axis and drag the x-axis all the way to the end right here and then we're just going to trim the last frame um, right there let's go you know obviously you know double check everything and make sure it works if nothing if it doesn't work just go ahead and restart the clip as you can see there you go now it's key framing to the left right there so you can see there we go it's just key framing to the left now i'm actually going to do i'm going to go ahead and actually kind of reset this right here so you can see right here i'm going to go to the end i'm actually going to go back a couple frames right here i'm going to go ahead and just take the x-axis and then just drag it over right here as you can see right there now let's go ahead and just trim the end um right there and then obviously you know double check again as you can see here you, you, know, you make little mistakes and that's why it's very very important to have the color background because if i didn't have a color background i might actually end up missing that so you can see right there now let's make sure there's no edges right there so keep on playing it right here and there's no edges right there so let's go to the end right here and let's just trim this one to the end again you want to make sure you want to go through and make sure there are no um, you know purple edges right there you, you can't see any of the background uh, that's really important the one thing that I like to do this is completely dependent on you but the, what I like to do is I actually like to change the path the keyframe path to linear you would think well why not smooth well smooth is nice but sometimes what happens with a smooth a uh, keyframe path is it kind of like kind of curves or kind of like gradually gets you know, faster or slower it doesn't create a very, a very seamless movement so you can see right here is a keyframe path to linear it's a very constant speed and as you can see right here here is smooth or kind of you know kind of creates this weird curve so it's all dependent on you you can go through you know, and figure out which one you like better I personally think linear looks a lot better because I just feel like in my opinion it, the speed is a lot more constant when you're using um, a linear keyframe path so if it's uh, wait for this to render right here so you can see right here I just think that looks a lot smoother and that's completely dependent on you you know which one uh, you, pre you prefer to do so let's go over here and change the keyframe path to linear again this is just what I like I think this looks um, the best and you can of course you know um, figure out which one you like or choose the one you prefer but I just think linear looks better I think there's a lot more the, the motion um, is a lot more fluid so what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna go ahead and create a compound clip so option G and basically you need to create a compound clip in order to use the cross dissolve I tried to use a cross dissolve without a compound clip and the photo kind of jitters around and it doesn't look that good so I'm gonna create a compound clip option G pick two right here so basically I'm just creating each one of these photos into a compound clip because I need to add a cross dissolve and the only way to do that is by using a compound clip so option G and then pick three uh, right there 
Now here's where it might differ for you. This is what I found to work and you know, you might find a different method. What, what you wanna do is you wanna trim the end and the beginning of each one of the compound clips by 40 frames because you need to give Final Cut Pro 10 enough media to transition into. So you can see we're gonna go back 40 frames. We're gonna go like this, so we're gonna go um, 40 frames right here. Remember it has to be at least 30 frames because the transition is going to be one second and in the 60 frames per second timeline 32 you need you need, thir you need 60 frames so 30 here and 30 here. Actually no, I'll, I'll redo that one. I'm going to go I'll just do 40 right here. So this you know is all dependent on you. You, you. you might find a different method or a different way of doing it. To me I just found this works. Uh, I might be you know, completely wrong and there may be an easier uh, method but I just I just personally in my opinion I found it to work so let's go ahead move it over here so you can see right here and again you can make sure and check that it uh, properly works and if a transition doesn't add like, I'm, I'm, I may have made a mistake right here and I'll know that by adding a transition if the transition doesn't work it means I made a mistake so let's go to cross dissolve right here and as you can see I'm just going to apply a cross dissolve right here as you can see there you go if the cross dissolve didn't work it's because you don't have enough media to transition into so let's go right here control D one second as you can see okay so we change it to one second as long as that works as long as the transition adds it works if the transition doesn't add it means you did something wrong and you want to you know, reset it usually what it means is you didn't give Final Cut enough media um, to transition into and out of so let's go ahead and play it right here unless there's again like anything you double check it uh, to make sure it works I mean I'm pretty sure this works but I could be wrong so let's see as you see right there there we go so it fades right here and then as you can see right here let's see this works right here and then that phase right there obviously you know, this is just you know quick little i'm trying to go over this pretty quickly i can you know, obviously go through you know make a little more uh, minor adjustments right there but i think for the most part for the concept and the idea i think this i think this looks pretty good so you're basically just fading it you know obviously again you can mess with more settings this is just a quick example um right there and then voila now another thing that i like to do is i like to go over here and head over to motion blur now this is a plugin you're gonna have to download uh, externally or use it download separately uh, motion blur does not come with Final Cut Pro 10 which to be honest with you I'm not quite sure why but anytime you're doing anything any type of keyframing or animation you want to use motion blur because what motion blur does is it just helps smooth out um, animations so what kind of Final Cut I'm not quite sure how it really works what, or how the plugin really works but basically the plugin is it, it finds any sort of movement and it, it just basically makes it it just adds blur to any sort of movement which can sometimes be a downfall if you have a really fast moving shot and you add motion blur, it'll start adding mo a blur to the actual shot. Um, but that's basically what it, it finds a place where there's motion and then just blurs it, just help make it look a lot more seamless. And as you see right here, Final Cut's just rendering right there. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just stalling time right here until Final Cut um, renders this project right here. And again, you just always want to add motion blur, so it should be done in about a couple seconds right here. And now let's go ahead and watch it right here and make sure. Um, open up the project right here and let's make sure everything looks good right here make sure the motion blur didn't you know, end up screwing anything up so you can see right here there we go it's a lot more seamless right here so let's play this one and as you can see there we go that looks a lot better um, right there so you can see right here there we go simple as that and there you go now you're fading into the next photo again of course you can adjust it here and there but that's just the basic idea of how to create this really cool um, effect anyways hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it helpful and informative if you're new to this channel i upload final cut pro 10 tutorials every day at 10 a.m eastern standard time so if you enjoy these types of videos definitely consider hitting that subscribe button also i found pro 10 tutorial playlist with over 260 final cut pro 10 tutorials if you want to watch more uh, videos in final cut definitely go ahead and check out my um, playlist there's a whole bunch of really cool videos anyways i'll see you in the next one peace Thank you.